right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you book with another Japan tag. And this time, this tag was done by V. <laughs> so she has 10 questions here. I'll answer them as best I can. And uh, for those who don't know, I'm not currently living in Japan, but I lived there from 2013 to 2015 in Yokosuka, Japan, being stationed in the Navy. So we'll begin. Question number one, have you ever been to Japan and where? Well, <laughs> I kind of let the cat out of the bag a little early. So uh, like I said, for those of you who don't know, I was in the United States Navy for five years. Uh, two of those years, I was stationed out in Yokosuka, Japan, which is about half hour, 45 minutes south of Yokohama and about an hour and a half, two hours away from Tokyo as well. And I was stationed on board USS Lassen DDG-82 for deployed naval force out in Japan. Got a lovely apartment off base and lived my Japan life doing my Japan thing. Move on to question number two. What are three things that you like about Japan? One of the things I like about Japan is obviously the food. The food's really good and it's not all fish and rice. You can still get um, like American style food like burgers and things like that out in Japan either at fast food restaurants like McDonald's or like little local mom and pop restaurants. And those are the ones that are really good, by the way. Another thing that I like is the safety of Japan. Um, I never ever felt like I was going to be mugged, jumped, never had to worry about anything getting stolen, even though I've heard a lot of stories about people losing their bikes. Being the uh, American born and raised boy I am, um, I was still, despite, you know, the safety and all that stuff, I would still lock my door and lock up my bike and stuff like that. But I never felt like, hurry up and shop before somebody jacks my bike or I gotta lock my door at night or else somebody's gonna burst in and like rob me or rape me or something like that. I uh, never had to worry about that at all in Japan. And uh, the last thing that I like about Japan is the work ethic slash attention to detail in like every job whether that's you know working at a five-star restaurant or uh, just working at the convenience store, working at McDonald's, stuff like that. Um, just the attention to detail is something that I really do like about Japan. And it's something I try to bring into my own life, into my own work ethic and things like that. It really showed me that I should probably up my game as far as uh, work ethic goes. Question number three. What are three things you dislike about Japan? It's kind of hard to say that one, but uh, I'll see if I can get three things. One of the things that I don't like about Japan is just their philosophies about the individual versus the group. So in America, the, as the phrase goes, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, and in Japan, the nail that sticks up gets hammered down. So in America, it's highly encouraged for the individual to speak up and if there's something wrong, then to let the group know, hey, this isn't right. Or maybe, hey, can I make a suggestion about something? You know, that kind of behavior is highly encouraged in America. Whereas in Japan, they're about uh, the harmony of the group. And so they want everybody to be in sync. They want them to be on the same page. And if anybody speaks up and tries to um, disrupt that harmony, then that's highly discouraged and they often, you know, get the hammer down. So that's something that I really don't like about Japan. Uh, one of the other things I don't like about Japan is the, uh, the smallness of certain things. I guess that can be a good thing and a bad thing depending on what it is. Like obviously food portions, it's kind of a good thing because it, it helps you lose weight without really trying. So that's pretty nice. Uh, clothes sizes. Uh, <laughs> I guess it's one way to uh, discourage being really fat in Japan is having clothes that are kind of small, tight fitting. So, you know, if your clothes start getting a little, a little extra tight, a little too uncomfortably tight, maybe, you know, you shouldn't have that second hamburger, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I guess one of the last things that I don't like about Japan I guess just how expensive certain things are, like uh, cars. Cars are a very expensive item to have in Japan to maintain and all that kind of stuff. So I guess that's the thing I do dislike. But 
most of what I said about Japan, uh, let's just put it this way, you know, the pros outweigh the cons. Of the stuff that I disliked about Japan, I can kind of push that to the side for the most part because there's a lot of things to like about Japan. So let's just get that out of the way before people start putting stuff in the comments like, Andy, you hate Japan. I hope you rot and die in America. <laughs> so let's just, you know, put that to bed now. So going on to question number four. What started your interest in Japan? So I did a whole video on this uh, for my Andy Japandi series back when I lived in Japan. It was Andy Japandi 100, and I'll be sure to put a link to that video in the description down below in the booty boops. And if I don't, be sure to tell me something because sometimes I forget. <laughs> so try to keep me in line, all right? Um, but the thing that started my interest in Japan, just to make a long story short, my cousins back in the early 90s were stationed out in Yokosuka, Japan, which I later on, about 20 some odd years later, be stationed out there myself. <laughs> Didn't really see that coming, but they were stationed out in Yokosuka as well at the time. Uh, like I said, this is the early 90s, so we didn't have Google or YouTube or any of that other stuff to look up what life in Japan was like. So the only uh, resources that I had at the time were stuff that my cousins would send me from, from Japan, whether it's chopsticks, bowls, cups, pictures. Uh, they sent me like Japanese yen coins, things like that. I also had like books and encyclopedias and stuff like that to see pictures of Japan, what Japan was like. But uh, like I said, my resources were pretty limited compared to now where, you know, everybody and their brother knows every little thing about Japan, you know, just from a little button on their phone. So that's what got me started in Japan. And then in the late 90s, early 2000s, that was the big anime boom. And that was another big uh, proponent for really making me think that, you know, I could probably live out in Japan too. And it, it was the uh, it was the anime Tenshi Muyo that really got me interested in actually living out in Japan because they would show all these amazing like B-roll shots of just like the hills of Japan and fields. And it really had this bigness to it, even though it's a small island where there's a lot of people, but the island itself is only about the size of California. But they have about as many people as they do in America, it seems like. But yet they have all these natural forests and mountains and all this kind of stuff. And I think that's what really got me into, you know, moving to Japan's not a bad idea. <laughs> so that's what got me uh, into Japan to begin with. Question number five. What is your favorite spot in Japan? That's kind of hard to say because there's a lot of different little spots in Japan. Obviously, you could pick uh, several spots from Tokyo, such as Akihabara, um, Ochanomizu, Kanda was another little lesser known spot in Tokyo that I think is a lot of fun. Um, even within Yokosuka itself, there's some fun things to do, you know, whether that's go to the park to, you know, throw a frisbee or look at the ocean and just chill out or go to uh, Plaza Capcom to play some video games in the arcades and get your ass kicked by little five-year-old Japanese kids. <laughs> You know, there's a lot to see and do. And obviously also in Yokohama as well, which is very close to Yokosuka, uh, you could go to like the Cosmo Wheel, you go to Minato Mirai, which is the pier area where the Cosmo Wheel is, among other things. There's just so many different spots that I loved about Japan. So it's hard for me to pick my favorite spot. Um, but if I had to, uh, probably my favorite spot in Japan was my own apartment because it overlooked uh, Tokyo Bay, overlooked an island very close by to Yokosuka called Sarushima, which is a monkey island in Japanese. That was my favorite spot because it was close to, you know, convenience stores and all kinds of different things. And uh, I just loved seeing the sunrise and the sunset from there. Just a beautiful place, beautiful spot. So that's my pick for favorite spot in Japan. So let's move on to question number six. What is your favorite Japanese food? Now, like I said before, in one of my favorite things about Japan, one of my favorite things is just their attention to detail, their work ethic, regardless of what job they hold, whether that's working at a five-star restaurant or working at a McDonald's. They still put the same amount of work into making the food and the same amount of same uh, attention to detail. 
I would tell a lot of people who have never been to Japan and you know would ask me questions about oh, what's the food like out there <laughs> I would say you know everything's good from what I've had never really had a bad meal out in Japan um, even going to McDonald's um, it's as close to the food that you see on the menu as you're gonna get as far as like the attention to detail and the care put into just a friggin McDonald's hamburger right <laughs> It doesn't even seem like that big of a deal here in the States because that's just minimum wage jobs. That's just something that kids typically pick up as like a starter job. They don't have that work ethic that the Japanese people do. And I think that's been one of the major influences for me to just kind of step up my own game as far as work ethic goes, just to put more attention to detail on things, you know, regardless of what job I have. So as far as like favorite Japanese food goes, uh, I'd probably have to say ramen um, at the, my local little ramen shop in my neighborhood and uh, it's just it's really good the atmosphere is great typically not a lot of people there and I could just go in punch in the numbers hand them the little ticket get my beer get my ramen all for a simple uh, saiyan or a ten spotter basically in uh, in American dollars so question number seven, who is your favorite Japanese celebrity? It's kind of hard to say, but uh, as far as people who are celebrities in Japan, I'd probably have to say, even though he's not Japanese, I'd probably have to say uh, Marty Friedman because he was very influential to me as far as getting to learn Japanese more and being able to understand things better. He was just kind of a motivating force for me to learn Japanese. Yeah, he himself technically isn't Japanese, but whatever. He's a, he's a celebrity in Japan, so it counts, right? <laughs> and I actually got to meet him, too. It was all kinds of awkward, but it was a fun moment for me regardless. I just don't like looking at that video now because it's really cringy. <laughs> That's just me. But it is on the Angie Japandi playlist if you guys want to check that out. Once again, the link to the Angie Japandi playlist is in the description down below. Question number eight. Where would you like to visit next within Japan? If I, if given the chance to come back to Japan, uh, I would really love to visit southern Japan, so like Kyushu area. Um, when I visited uh, Sasebo, which is another naval town, very similar to Yokosuka, but in southern Japan, uh, when I visited Sasebo and Hiroshima in southern Japan, it was just such a beautiful place. Um, very well set up, uh, lots of little tiny islands and things like that. It was just, to me, it was very gorgeous. And if given the chance to either move to Japan or visit Japan again, I would like to live in southern Japan because it seems to be just a great place to live. But uh, maybe for practical reasons, I might have to move to Tokyo at some point. But, you know, <laughs> we'll get there when we get there. So. Anyway, question number nine. Do I speak Japanese? Yohongo shabate imasu. There you go. <laughs> Not very good at it, but uh, I can speak enough of the Nihongo if need be. So we'll end this with the final question. If I could cosplay a Japanese fictional character, who would it be? Hmm. Huh. <laughs> You know, I haven't really thought about that, actually. Um, I don't really do cosplay or dress up or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, some of my more uh, adventurous uh, anime friends are friends who like anime, not... <laughs> I'm not getting to that point, but some of my friends who are a little more adventurous, they do cosplay at conventions and stuff like that, and that's fun. But for me personally, I don't really do it. But if I had to... I think it'd be kind of interesting to do, even though he's not Japanese, it'd be kind of interesting to do Guile from Street Fighter. I think that would be kind of interesting because, you know, he's like the, even though he's Air Force and I was Navy, but he's still like the, you know, American GI and stuff like that. So it'd be kind of fun to cosplay as him, you know, regardless of how not buff I am. <laughs> It's still be kind of fun. So there you go. And if you guys would like to join in on the Japan tag, uh, be sure to leave a video response down below in the boopity boops. And uh, be sure to also let V know as well. 
leave a video response link to her videos and stuff as well and uh, I'll shoot you a comment <laughs> so with that said this is the Andy Sun signing up for now they can you guys boot for tuning into this uh, Japan tag <laughs> another one and for watching my other stuff also want to thank you guys for liking with a thumbs commenting subscribing send a few friends to the party and hey as always we'll see you next time catch you later guys bye